G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for the last trade update. It's an emotional day, it's been a uh, big trade period, but uh, today was of course the uh, trade deadline day, which means that all the deals between clubs had to be finalised by 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. As such, we have answers on all of the deals that we've been speculating about for the last more month probably. Actually, I think I made trade videos as early as June or July, so it has been a long time coming. But in today's video, I'm going to break down uh, exactly what happened in terms of deals in the final day of the trade period. We, uh, we I think we got resolutions on almost all of them. We'll go through them one by one and see what went down. This isn't the last trade related video. I just meant it's the last trade update. Uh, I will be doing some analysis on like, you know, winners and losers and, and seeing which teams did well and which didn't um, following the trade period. But for now, this is an update on how trade deadline day went. So I'll run through these in no particular order, but the uh, the first one I'll talk about is Jack Gittivan, who did make his way to Hawthorne from the Collingwood Footy Club, as uh, reported a few days ago. The story broke. It was bubbling away for a little bit. Overnight, or at least in England time, we saw a little bit of extra context as to why Gittivan might have switched clubs. Uh, I really don't want to use this channel to uh, further along rumors, but I'm curious how many people can let me know in the comments that they saw what I saw circulating on social media last night. Sorry, I know that's really cryptic, but I really can't say because it was X-rated content. But anyway, so I'll break it down into which club got what. So Hawthorne obviously got Jack Ginnivan as part of this deal. They got pick 39. They got a Collingwood's future second and Collingwood's future fourth. In exchange, Collingwood received 33 in this year's draft. They also received Hawthorne's second and third next year. So to break that down, uh, Ginnivan gets to the Hawks. Pies uh, upgrade their 39 to 33. They swap future seconds next year on the basis that Hawthorne's going to have better future picks, you would think. And in exchange for Collingwood's fourth rounder next year, they get Hawthorne's third rounder. So that's a reasonably big upgrade. And Gidevin comes in alongside, you know, four other Hawks players who probably slot into their best 22. Obviously, Brock Brockman's out of the team. So in theory, you know, Hawthorne had a small forward gap to uh, to plug. And then equally, Collingwood recruiting Lockie Shules. It's fair to suggest they have that position well and truly covered because uh, I think Lockie Shules is a lot better than Gidevin. But he's not a bad player if you kick 40 goals as a you know second year rookie or whatever that's a big achievement but still my heart does go out to you Hawthorne fans who now have to start to pretend to like Jack Edivan. Asava Radagalia that deal got done Geelong eventually relented and traded him to Port Adelaide uh, in what was a strange deal in hindsight like this deal took way too long it went all the way to the trade period deadline it did get done so Port Adelaide get their man Asava Radagalia outright in return Geelong received the pick 25 that they originally rejected the additional picks that they've received are 76 and 94. To be honest, like, I don't really understand why. 76 and 94 are unlikely to get it be used in this draft. I don't know how many selections, admittedly, Geelong are using, but they have what is pick seven now. They now have 25. The next pick, if I'm not mistaken, is 76, then 80, then 94. So are they going to take three picks at the back end of the draft? Perhaps. I'm not too sure. But it seems like a weird outcome and an anticlimactic outcome for a deal that was where 25 was nowhere near going to be enough. They've settled for 25, 76, and 94. And again, we know that Port Adelaide did have the upper hand in, in a sense in that Radically is out of contract, but still this was a tremendous waste of time for the Geelong Footy Club. Anyway, we also saw another painstaking deal that went all the way to the uh, the end of the trade period. I think this was a buzzer beater, this one. Zerk Thatcher and Xavier Dersma did swap clubs. So Zerk Thatcher went to Port Adelaide along with with pick 73 in this year's draft and Essendon and Collingwood's future fourth, which uh, Essendon were holding, obviously. In exchange, Essendon simply received Xavier Dersma. So they turn a young, promising key back into what I think will be a best 22 sort of wingman, potentially a midfielder, who knows, but he will be best 22. So I think this is a good value pickup. And uh, in terms of extras, you know, this was holding up because uh, Port Adelaide wanted this to uh, not be a straight swap and Essendon did. And instead they've got 73 and two future fourths out of it. So again, a lot of posturing, a lot of haggling and not much return. Essendon get their man in Xavier Dersma. They've turned an unfortunate outcome of a young, decent player requesting a trade home into a positive outcome, I think. And who knows, somewhere down the track, does this open the door for potentially the other Dersma to want to play with his brother one day? Who knows? Who knows? We also saw Jack Gunston, surprisingly, I uh, say so surprisingly, we've known for a few days now, but uh, in, in a surprising twist of events, Jack Gunston has ended up back at Hawthorne and Brandon Ryan has made his way to the Brisbane Lions. Now, the Hawks in this deal got Jack Gunston, pick 47 and 61, as well as Brisbane's future second round pick. 
The Lions got Brandon Ryan, who was uh, one of the first picks in the midseason draft this year. A uh, big two-meter two tall ruckman, 25 years old, mature player. Uh, the Lions also got 39 and 54, and the Hawks feature fourth. So to try and break that down, you've obviously got Gunston and Ryan switching clubs. Uh, the pick swaps related were 47 and 61 for 39 and 54. So two upgrades to the Lions there, and in exchange, Hawthorne get... Brisbane's future second in exchange for Hawthorne's future fourth. So a lot of mixing and matching there. I don't know too much about Brandon Ryan. I know he's played three games. I think he kicked a bag of three. Um, so showed some promise at AFL level. Brisbane obviously targeted him. Um, and then we only really heard about that after the Gunston uh, trade request. So the Lions still get a key forward presence uh, in exchange for Gunston. Gunston goes back to the club, you know, where he really made a name for himself. And we know that Hawthorne didn't really want to lose Gunston in the first place. So this is kind of a win-win, I suppose. But longer term, doesn't do a whole lot whole lot for Hawthorne. The Hawks did get Mabi Chol as well from the Gold Coast Suns, another deal that uh, took them to the deadline day. Uh, the Hawks got Chol and pick 62 for Brisbane's future second, which uh, came from the Gold Coast Suns, but the Gold Coast held Brisbane's future second. So you're really looking at like pick 35 to 40 next year. Uh, in exchange for Chol and pick 62. So the Suns were pushing for a future second. Hawthorne thought this was worth a future third. In the end, it gets done for a future second, although the Hawks do get pick 62 back. So we've seen so far that the Hawks have kind of pushed 33 out, obviously, for Ginevan, but they've accumulated, I think, pick 39, a few picks in the 40s and 62 now, and this will help them match bids for Will McCabe and 2GF. A bit of a left field one, we did see Jack Billings move clubs. Again, this one was a fairly quiet move in the sense that we didn't hear it coming. We didn't really know which club he was going to go to. Um, Jack Billings goes to the Demons, Melbourne Footy Club, and the Saints received a future third round pick. So a pretty cheap deal for a potential depth player to, to even be best 22 is not beyond the realms of possibility. Jack Billings has some talent. Uh, maybe he was just a little bit overpaid at the Saints for what he was producing. They wanted to give him a fresh start, get him off the books. Melbourne, you know, have comparatively lost uh, a few soldiers this year. You know, Harms, Jordan, and Grundy. They had a couple of forwards in McAdam, and oh, I, I'm not sure what position Billings will play, but he obviously can play forward mid. So a good mature player, a decent player that they can obviously afford salary cap wise uh, to get in and help them with their continued premiership push. We also saw Jacob Kaczynski finally make his way to Richmond. Uh, this was done for pick 49 in the end. Again, it was a bit of a mixed bag. I think Hawthorne, it was reported they wanted pick 28 originally. It was reported Richmond offering pick 49 was their original offer, but then it seemed to become Hawthorne wanted pick 49 and Richmond had only offered a pick in the 60s. So in the end, it's, it, it's found a middle point and Hawthorne get it uh, pick 49 for this. As we saw coming, Elijah Hollands has joined Carlton as well, joining his brother Ollie. Uh, this one had a little bit of increased momentum over the last few days, but Carlton received Hollands, pick 28 in this year's draft, and Gold Coast future fourth round pick. In exchange, Gold Coast received pick 26 and Essendon's future third round pick. So uh, to clarify, Hollands finds a new club and uh, Gold Coast upgrade from 28 to 26, which gets them a few more points. And then next year as well, they've upgraded from Gold Coast future fourth to Essendon's future third. It's getting messy because a lot of these picks have bounced around through numerous clubs. But uh, again, it's an upgrade of a future fourth to a future third, as well as a two pick upgrade this year. So not a really big significant deal for Gold Coast here. Port Adelaide did receive two Ruckman in this year's trade period. This one was one I found a little bit interesting, but at the end of the day, it's happened. So Jordan Sweet joined Port Adelaide from the Bulldogs for about pick 50, I think it is. And Ivan Soldo also, uh, well, I didn't think this one was going to happen a few days ago, but again, some increased momentum lately. Saw uh, Soldo join Port Adelaide from Richmond. Obviously, Soldo wants some more game time as a number one ruck. So Port got uh, Ivan Soldo and pick 50. So I think this one happened first. Port Adelaide received pick 50 for Ivan Soldo. Then they gave that to the Bulldogs for uh, Jordan Sweet. But in terms of what Richmond received for Ivan Soldo, they got picks one, uh, 41 and 49 in this year's draft. They got Fremantle's future second round pick and Port's future fourth. So basically now uh, they get an extra pick in the 40s, basically, and a one pick upgrade. And they hold Fremantle's future second, which, you know, if they finish where they did this year, it'll probably be around about the late 20s, which is a pretty good deal. But we do probably expect Fremantle to improve a bit. So it's probably going to be in the 30s and uh, Port Adelaide's future fourth. Then I think this was the final trade of the trade deadline. Uh, I'm not sure if it was this or the Dersma one, but Dan Brosio finally made his way to Hawthorne. 
um, in exchange for pick 61 in this year's draft and Collingwood's future fourth round pick. So a very low key move there all in all. So to wrap up the trade period, Hawthorne got all of their targets done. We saw Jack Billing surprisingly make a move uh, to Melbourne. Well, not surprisingly, but in just that we didn't really know what was happening there, if I'm not mistaken. Port Adelaide got their targets. Dersma also finds his way to Essendon. Port Adelaide really have loaded up on um, obviously some tall timber. That's four talls, two rucks, Zerk Thatcher, and uh, it's overrating Ilya. So two rucks and two key backs. They've also now traded out of three consecutive first round drafts. So we'll do more analysis on each team individually uh, as time wears on, guys. But for now, that's probably just going to wrap up the uh, the trade period. It was uh, a reasonable one, I suppose. No real huge names that swap clubs, but sometimes it's just as intriguing when key role players switch clubs and can provide value to that team in a finals push or a premiership push. A uh, good example of this is Collingwood last year. No huge names joined them. Okay, maybe mix stay was the biggest name but even still he's not a, a huge name but it's even some names like Bobby Hill and, and Billy Frampton as well who became premiership players I'll use that example a lot but overall it's been a pleasure covering this trade period with you guys really appreciate the support and all the people that have jumped on um, but also you know supportive comments as well I really feeling like we're in a good loop together I feel like very engaged with you guys at the moment which is nice. It's uh, it's been a slow year on YouTube, and um, it's been a it's kind of accelerated over the last couple of months. And uh, I thank you very very much. But for now, I'm going to log off. I'm going to edit this video, and I'm going to start working on the next one for you. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.